So this has been a crazy season in the NBA. With James Harden averaging nearly 40 points a game, Giannis putting up numbers significantly better than his MVP season last year. But the biggest story in the NBA this year is without question the rise of Luka Doncic. And any fans of these channels, and any fans of this channel know how high I've been on Luka Doncic ever since he was a 16 year old breaking into the Real Madrid team back in 2016. And the thing is that a lot more people nowadays are starting to look towards Europe to see who the next Luka Doncic is going to be. In reality, we may never see another Luka Doncic in our lifetime. He is a generational type player. It may be 20, 30 years until we see another player like that. He's basically the highest IQ player we've probably seen since LeBron, maybe even higher. So I don't think there's any point looking out specifically for the next Luka Doncic. But if you guys are looking for the next superstar players coming out of Europe, there's obviously Denny Avdia, who's playing for Maccabi Tel Aviv this year and was part of the Israeli team that won the under 20s European Championship. And I will make another video on him. I made one last year. But this guy right here is actually playing for the same team as Luka Doncic, Real Madrid, and has broke the vast majority of Luka Doncic's records from when he was just breaking into the Real Madrid team. And that player is Usman Garuba. But before we get on to the main part of the video, i just like to say we are doing a daily December. We're uploading a video every single day this month. So if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We are trying to hit 110,000 subscribers by the end of the month. And yeah, this is just video number two. Hopefully, hopefully we can get another 29. We've managed to get daily December the last two years. Hopefully we can do it in 2019. But anyway, now let's get on to the video. So Usman Garuba is a six foot eight center slash power forward slash at times can play at the small forward apparently. Haven't seen him, but supposedly he has played out there a little bit. And he's born in 2002. He was born in Madrid to Nigerian parents and joined the youth sections of Real Madrid when he was 11 years old. For years, he was one of the top youth players in Spain. And in 2016, he managed to win the European Under-16 Championship while winning MVP and shooting over 70% from the field. He averaged 16.3 points, 12.3 rebounds, two assists and 2.9 blocks per game. And I know you guys might be wondering, 2016, that's quite a while ago, considering he's only 17 now. Yes, he had just turned 14 years old. He was one of the youngest players in the entire competition, which is crazy. Like, as you guys know, like as you get older, say if you're 17, 18, playing with say 19 year olds, isn't gonna be that big a deal. But when you're 14, 14 to 16 is when people go through, most people go through their major growth spurts. The fact that he was not only competing with the best of the best in Europe, two years older than them, he was winning MVP, shooting 70% and leading Spain to a gold medal, which is absolutely crazy. The next summer, he didn't play in any of the international tournaments due to an injury he picked up. But in the 2017-18 season, he was actually in the Real Madrid B team, which is the reserve team, which is still a high enough level. I know it is in the fourth tier in Spain, but it's still a relatively high level. And it's men's basketball. Considering he was only 15 years old, in 11 games that season, he averaged 11.1 points, 9.2 rebounds, and 1.7 blocks per game. This was against grown men at a relatively decent standard of basketball. That summer, again, he played in the under 16 European Championship, where he led the Spanish team to a silver medal. And surprisingly enough, he didn't average too much different, pretty much the exact same point rebound numbers, although he did average more assists, however, less blocks per game. However, in this tournament, he started to expand his range a little bit. While he didn't shoot the highest percentage from three under 30%, he showed that he was willing to take three pointers and if you take out the amount of threes he shot, he shot quite a similar percentage. However, it was a sign of things to come. In the 2018-19 season, he played mainly for Real Madrid's B team again, averaging 14.6 points and 12 rebounds, which again is kind of crazy considering it was against grown men and the guy was 16 years old. However, in October 2018, at 16 years, seven months, he played for the Real Madrid team in the Liga ACB, which is the top tier in Spain. He was the youngest center in that entire league's history. He was the third youngest Real Madrid player, and one of those two guys that was older than him was Luka Doncic. In the 2019-20 season, after a summer where, again, he was a leader on a Spain team who won a European championship, especially considering the fact that, like, the guys were all a year older than him as well, this summer, he managed to 
Again, shoot a couple of threes. Not the highest percentage, but again, showed that he wasn't reluctant to take them. Averaged kind of similar numbers. One of the best rebounders underage in Europe. Although offensively, we'll talk about it a bit later, his game is not the most polished. However, coming into this season, he was in the Real Madrid Liga ACB team. He actually became the youngest starter in Real Madrid history. At 17 years and six months, he was actually younger than Luka Doncic, and he was also the youngest player ever to get a double-double in a win over Mercia, where he got 13 points, 10 rebounds. I'm not gonna talk too much about his records because DKM has already made a video. I will leave a link to that in the description. If you wanna go more in depth on that, you can. But again, it's kind of crazy because he's complete, he's gone from absolutely dominating at 14, a couple of really good, but kind of more quiet summers, and then gone right into the Real Madrid first team and slotted in like he's a seasoned vet. In his EuroLeague debut, he got 12 points, four rebounds, and three steals, which is crazy against Bayern Munich. And he's not only just playing in garbage time. If you guys are watching the highlight, if you guys are watching these games or we're watching the highlights, you can see these are games are tight going down to the wire, and he's there on the floor. This season, in six EuroLeague games, while he's not playing the most minutes, he's still playing 13 minutes a game at 17 years old, averaging 5.7 points and three rebounds a game. And in the ACB, playing 20 minutes a game, he's averaging 5.6 points and averaging 6.5 rebounds per game. He's shooting 78% from the field in EuroLeague play, which is the top competition outside of the NBA. And Spain, Spanish ACB is probably the top um, National League outside the NBA. Shooting over 50% in both of the leagues, and again, nearly 80% in EuroLeague, which is absolutely nuts. So I've spent enough time talking about what he does now, or what he's done in his career. Now I'm gonna be talking about his actual game. So his strengths. His strengths is that, obviously, as you guys can see from the clips, he's got an NBA body and he's had an NBA body realistically since he was about 15 years old. The guy can jump with the best of them. He rebounds extremely well, even only at six foot eight, although he does have a wingspan of seven foot three, which does help an awful lot with getting rebounds. His jump shot, while he's not the best shooter in the world, he seems to be able to hit them when he's left open, is a bit reluctant to shoot the ball, but as the years have gone on, he's shooting the ball more and more. Free throw percentage is a bit worrying though. He's only around a 50% free throw shooter and you're kind of hoping that that changes over time. Shooting needs a bit, little bit to be worked on. But the biggest thing with this guy that a lot of people are kind of in awe about is his defensive versatility. And it's the reason why he's probably going to be a first round, well, he's without question going to be a first round pick in 21. And it's the reason why he's probably going to be a lottery pick. And if he has another big year in Europe next year, and even if he has a solid year, he's not going to win an MVP, he's not going to be Doncic, but if he even has a solid year, he may be a top five pick because the kind of stigma against European players has kind of gone away after Luka Doncic. But he's going to be an extremely versatile defender. In the Adidas Next Generation tournament, he was switched on to uh, the top European prospect for 2019, or sorry, for 2020 draft, Denny Avdia, a few times, and looked like he was well able to stay in front of him. He's a guy who will be able to play as a small ball five. He'll be able to play also at the four at the NBA level. He's playing at the four an awful lot for Real Madrid's first team, while spacing's not the same as it is at the NBA level. It still shows that he can kind of play a little bit on the perimeter, but where he is gonna excel again is at that small ball five position. More and more you're seeing in the NBA, and like six, eight to six, 10 centers that have just got long arms, that are more athletic, kind of finding a role, and that's where he's going to be perfect. Around the basket, he finishes quite well, can finish well with both hands, dunks really well. He doesn't have the best post game. His footwork doesn't seem to be anywhere near as developed as the guy I made the video on yesterday, Umar Balo. He's not gonna be as physically imposing in terms of like, bullying people inside and dominating strength wise. However, what he is, is the perfect type of player for the current NBA. He's a guy, he can run the floor, he can handle it a little bit. I don't know how his shot's gonna translate, but the fact that he has shot a couple of threes means that you're, he may be able to develop a shot. I don't know how that's gonna be. We're probably gonna see more in the next year or so, but it's unlikely we see him taking many three pointers for Real Madrid this year. So that's a really hard one to judge. But again, he is a such an intriguing prospect because he is the prototype for a modern center. Attacks rebounds hard. He can switch guard all five positions, has length, and can score a little bit inside. And if you hand the ball to him 10 feet from the basket, or if you hand the ball from 
to him one dribble from the basket he can one dribble dunk it and yeah that is a massive massive upside in terms of nba level and he's a player that will slot in at like a worst case scenario he's going to be an elite role player because you don't play major minutes for real madrid and then go into the nba and be terrible at worst case scenario, he's going to be a great role player. And that's the thing with the European players, especially if they're getting major minutes at high level in EuroLeague, their, their floor is good role player. While obviously Doncic is an exception, they may not have the ceiling of the elite athletes in America. You never know with Garuba though. They don't have, um, they have really high floors as well. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I have a feeling he's probably going to be somewhere between 5 and 10 in the 2021 NBA draft. And while the title of this video might have Luka Doncic in, I've mentioned Doncic a lot, and that's just because obviously he is breaking Doncic's records, playing for the same team, doing similar stuff to what Luka Doncic has done. Will he be Luka Doncic? Not a chance. Not a chance. Luka Doncic is a generational player, whereas Garuba is just, I don't know, he's probably I'm trying to think of even a comparison from what I've seen from young players in America. He might be a better in Yeka Kongwu, and Big O is and um, is going to be a really good NBA player. So anyway, yeah, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.